what is good everybody let's start off with the warning again federal law allows citizens to reproduce distribute or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures videotapes or video discs under certain circumstances without authorization of copyright holder this is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism news reporting teaching and parody which doesn't infringe of copyright under Title 17 U.S.C. Section 107. What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode. I am your boy, Fat Mike, and today we're going to be getting into this Paul Pelosi attack, which I honestly, I think that it's been made up just for the upcoming election but we will get into all this information <clears throat> have a few different news sources that I want to go over <clears throat> and explore with everybody and this will be the most information you'll get in one spot so Is this the right window? No, it's not. There's the right window. All right, so this is from the very first. Actually, I need to resize that one a little better. There we go. Now everything's in. So. This is from the very first video that came out from the police. Uh, so it's from CNN. Uh, police reveal identity of man who they say attacked Pelosi's husband. So we'll just start with this as our ground. Uh, please bear with me. This video may get around an hour. Um, just think of my channel as a podcast. That's basically what this is. So let's go through this and then we'll break it down. Feel free to drop comments if you have questions or whatever. Feel free. Here we go. A wonderful fucking commercial. Eh? Let's do that for right now until I can get past this fucking commercial. Okay, here we go. Approximately 2.27 this morning, San Francisco police officers were dispatched to the residence of Speaker Nancy Pelosi regarding an A-priority well-being check. When the officers arrive on scene, they encountered an adult male and Mr. Pelosi's husband, Paul. Our officers observed Mr. Pelosi and the suspect both holding a hammer. The suspect pulled the hammer away from Mr. Pelosi and violently assaulted him with it. Our officers immediately tackled the suspect, disarmed him, took him into custody, requested emergency backup, and rendered medical aid. The suspect has been identified as 42-year-old David DePepe. Mr. Pelosi and Mr. DePepe were transported to a local hospital for treatment. This is an active investigation currently being led by the San Francisco Police Department Special Investigations Division. And I mean, basically from that, you have all these news agencies saying that this was <clears throat> politically motivated by the right. NBC put up part of a story and then shortly removed it. Um, I'm not sure if it was Nancy or another far left that said the GOP has Paul Pelosi's blood on their hands. Um, yet also they they've not shown any 
of the security footage, which the house has security fo- cameras all over the place. <clears throat> also, if I can find in my notes... The San Francisco police suggested that there was a third person inside the Pelosi house that opened the door, but yet they can't be completely for sure on who or how the police got into the home. Yet, on the first story, they said that they got there and the back glass was broken. I mean, shit is all over the place. They refused to show any evidence. And I wonder why that is. Is this just all made up to demonize the left right before the elections? Hmm. We are working closely with our partners from the FBI, the U.S. Attorney's Office, the U.S. Capitol Police, and our district attorney here in San Francisco County, uh, D.A. Brooke Jenkins and her team. The motive... Is the FBI involved like they was on January 6th? for this attack is still being determined. Mr. DePepe will be booked at the San Francisco County Jail on the following charges. Attempted homicide, assault with a deadly weapon, elder abuse, burglary, and several several other additional felonies. Before I go any further, I'd like to thank the responding officers for their swift action this morning. Those San Francisco police officers are Officer Colby Wilmes, Officer Kyle Cagney, and Sergeant Edmund Hoang. I'd also Mm -hmm. like to thank our emergency dispatcher, Heather Grimes, who's standing here to my left, for a really amazing job. For inquiries regarding Mr. Pelosi and his condition, we refer you to the statement issued by Speaker Pelosi's office this morning. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to our District Attorney, Brooke Jenkins, for a few brief comments. And let me say in advance. So this fat bitch right over me here. This is supposedly the 911 operator that took the magical call from the Pelosi house because the first bit that came out, they said that there wasn't no 911 calls. (coughs) Sorry that there wasn't any 911 calls and that uh, David DePep set off a private, I mean, a silent alarm. But then they go change up their story that he somehow was able to call 911 and on this person's pure intuition, she knew to notify the police. Like... This shit sounds a little too good to be true, and especially for the time it took to respond to this, especially once we get up into the neighbors saying how things progressed, the time ratio makes absolutely no sense unless this was staged. This is what we know at this time. We will update you further, but we will not be able to take any questions after this statement. Thank you, Chief Scott. And I do want to commend the San Francisco Police Department for their immediate response um, to this home and for um, swiftly making sure that Mr. Pelosi was okay and that the suspect was apprehended. Um, We are working closely with them right now with respect to the investigation and will proceed with the appropriate charges. as things unfold, as long as as well as work with the U.S. Attorney's Office and our federal partners. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you all for being here. I know you may have. We'll update you when we get more. Do you know how he got into the house? That's it for right now. We're not going to take any questions. Thank you. We our office will be issuing a news release very soon. But that's it for now. Thank you. Shutting it down like that pedophile that got killed in jail, you know, covering up any evidence, but yet we're just supposed to go off of what they say. But what do you expect when you 
have a communist regime trying to take over this country. Now, no sooner that they put this little five-minute thing up, <coughs> all the left media started saying how this was a conservatives attacking Nancy Pelosi over her husband's assault, trying to say that uh, David DePep was a conservative. Come to find out, he's actually a Obama supporter. So, that tells you a lot there. So, this is from the Young Turks. Which I'm surprised they make anything even partway newsworthy anymore. Just as the details of the attack on uh, Paul Pelosi were coming out, some in media had to figure out how are you going to respond to this. Your small fucking commercials. Fucking mute that. Play this shit until I can skip it. Stop our gift. God damn it. Gave me the option to skip, but then I played another fucking video. This politicians as well, and thank. Thankfully, most of the politicians seem to be at least careful enough that they want to imply that violence is bad, but that doesn't mean that they won't use it for their own good. Take a look at how Glenn Youngkin decided to approach this. Listen, I, I want to stop for a minute and and. Uh, Listen, Speaker Pelosi's husband, uh, they had a break-in last night in their house, and he was assaulted. There's no room for violence anywhere, but we're going to send her back to be with him in California. That's what we're going to go do. Yeah, you can just say there's no room for violence. A but doesn't have to follow that sentence, actually. You can just go back to your speech or whatever and not say, yeah, she's probably grieving over the fact that her husband could still die. Let's send her to grieve in person. You don't actually have to go in that direction. You don't have to. Oh, but one of the conservative members of Congress or somebody running for some governor election, oh, he gets his house shot up. But none of these pricks care to fucking talk about that. But if it was somebody in the left, they would try to play this off as an assassination attempt. Because they're drama queens. Do what Fox has been doing all day. Before we knew too much about the, the guy who had done it. Uh, they responded to the news saying, this just shows that crime hits everybody. And this can happen anywhere. Crime is random. And that's why it's such a significant part of this election story. So we were already suspecting that it might have been political. They instantly are saying it's not. But then also, it should be political. The fact that someone might have tried to assassinate the speaker means that Republicans should win. See, they have yet to even show any pictures of one measly bruise on this person and they're already turning it to an assassination attempt. When clearly, the guy clearly stated he was not there to kill anyone. But yet they're going to charge this person with attempted murder and a bunch of bullshit. For all we know, they could have fucking beat somebody halfway to death drug them in there just to say, oh yeah, we stopped the guy from attacking this guy. And for the ones that don't know, it was a person who overstayed their visa significantly. So it was a illegal immigrant. Mind you, this one was from Canada, maybe Canadian French, because the, the last name, Depep, that's French name. Um, or De Pepe, however you want to say it. But yeah, uh, I I just think that supporters to the left finally got and seen the the truth and had a bone to pick with him. I mean, he did state that the worst thing that he wanted to do was cripple Nancy Pelosi, so she would have to be wheeled in front of everyone every day to show that their policy making or policy decisions have consequences. 
Which, I mean, uh, it's not too bad of a thought there, though. Just really stupid way that he went about it. In the election to Fox, they brought on uh, Caitlyn Jenner to talk about how you should not view this as a partisan issue. And then went on a rant about why the Democrats should lose and how they've caused the crime and how this is actually their responsibility. Caitlyn Jenner. Well, I mean, it kind of is the left's fault that you have an illegal immigrant overstaying their visa. And not to mention, he went to Mexico just to enter the United States. See, this is why we might as well just deport him because honestly, only like 14% actually come here looking for true asylum when the other 80, what, 86%? are here trying to work the system and cheat it. And then not to mention out of that 14%, how many are actually showing up to their court dates regardless if they get shipped to another state? Very fucking few. Specifically blamed Nancy Pelosi for not having enough security. And if that sounds like the way that they've responded to January 6th, then blaming Nancy Pelosi for the fact that she almost got killed there, yes, it's a pattern. They're repeatedly blaming her for the fact that she's nearly been assassinated twice. Okay, so speaking of the security, where was the security? She has multiple houses. She has security guarding them, regardless if they're there or not. So what is the coincidence that they don't have security the supposed day that this miraculously happened? They have security cameras completely surrounding the house. Neighbors have security cameras, but yet no news place can fucking show any evidence. We don't have body cam footage or nothing, nothing. And if there was a 911 call, that lady that they showed in this video here, This little fat one, uh, zebra looking bitch. They claim that this was the one that received the 911 call. But if I have the video that I seen earlier, the person that took the 911 call was a male. Not her. So who the fuck is this bitch if she ain't the operator that took that call? Well, let's go listen to these assholes demonize Republicans some more. Um, on the five, they blame the Joe Biden, saying that he promised to bring down the tenor of political discourse. That hasn't happened. People are more divided. So Biden is responsible for that, the fact that one of the- Well, look who you voted for. If you don't vote for me, then you're not black. I can only imagine the uproar if Trump ever had said something like that, but you let his pathetic old ass say that. His political allies was almost killed. Uh, Ronna McDaniel decided to- And apparently he was not almost killed, cause somehow, no sooner that he got there, the cops was there. So how does that entitle him to have almost killed somebody? And then they can't even get straight how many times he was hit in the head. But apparently it was like once. And apparently the guy didn't even try to strike Paul Pelosi until the cops was there right in front of them. How more inconvenient could that be? Frame it this way, are you ready to fire Nancy Pelosi? She, we Thank you for to. pausing in the campaigning for five minutes or maybe just not mentioning it at all. You don't actually have to comment on everything 
if you have nothing nice to say. It's sort of a rule that's been around for quite a while. Yeah. After the shit they just said, if you don't have nothing nice to say, then don't say anything. Well, where's the fun in that? I mean, it obviously is not a one-way road. Not you're you're all not the only ones that can talk shit, you know. Like the saying is, if you can't take the heat, get out the kitchen, you know. So if you can't take the heat from what you dish, then don't fucking try to dish shit out if you can't take shit back. You know what I mean? We've got a story up on tyt.com about how Fox News has made a shift in the last two months. They were pushing inflation nonstop, but in gas prices, but since gas prices went down, they dropped it like a rock and they've been doing nonstop crime stories. I guess do they expect you to believe that thinking that nobody watches them? I mean, they still talk about the gas crisis. It hasn't ended. It's still going on. <clears throat> and they currently do talk about the inflation almost every single day. So, like these libs, that's the thing, man. Whatever I say, you just listen to. How dare you look up and try to, com like, disagree with me. <clears throat> Fuck him, yo. I used to support this channel, and I no longer subscribe. But I still do keep up with their bullshit. Okay, so you're concerned about crime? That's a perfectly legitimate issue. Are they, but are they just concerned about crime? Or, or are we just concerned about crime against the left, but fuck if it's the left versus the right, right? Or are they trying to get Republicans elected by focusing only on crime? The answer is obvious, but you can read the story on tyt.com. So that is so that when they see this attack, yeah, you can read the story that, that we had some bullshit guy just write up and not really put any time into looking into the facts. We just made everything the fuck up. Whatever we thought it needed, we added. In fact, they think a couple of things. Oh, good, we'll fit it into our random crime narrative. Is it random? The guy was yelling, where's Nancy? Where's Nancy? And he smashed. Nancy Pelosi's husband had it. But yet, he's a through and throughout Obama supporter and a Black Lives Matter supporter. So therefore, you can't say that he's a Republican just because he was saying, where's Nancy, where's Nancy? Really great story. The Young Turks, great news station not in with a hammer. No, it was not at all random. It has nothing to do with the crime story that Fox News was talking about, right? So then they will say this trick. Oh, don't put, let's not when they find out it was a right winger, which it was 100% a right winger that believe demonize the right, demonize the right. We must demonize the right. Oh, it most definitely had to be a right winger. Yeah, right winger that supports fucking Obama, a right winger that supports Black Lives Matter. Yeah, that really fucking exists. In January 6th conspiracy, the QAnon conspiracies, etc. They will uh, then say, Q don't politicize this. Q don't Q politicize this. But remember, it was crime and it's Nancy Pelosi's fault. Mm -hmm. But wait a minute. you ch They're amazing at this. Nancy Pelosi's husband gets attacked. By an illegal immigrant that overstayed his visa and is here illegally. But no, it's not Nancy or Joe or Kamala's fault. No, no. But yet they want the borders opened so badly and to just let any fucking person in. But no, no, no. It's not their fault that illegals got in, overstayed their welcome and attacked who they supported. And they attack, forget not talking about it. They attack her and blame her for her husband getting attacked. It's just madness. Do you know that there was a poll done 
of Republicans, what percentage of them thought that Joe Biden was responsible for January 6? The riot was because Joe Biden had won the presidency. So it was a riot against Joe Biden. 52% of Republicans thought it was No, the riot was about the fairness within the election, not because Joe Biden was claimed victor. Yet again, propaganda, propaganda, demonize the right, demonize the right. Joe Biden's fault. Why? Because they turn on Fox News and they say, oh, the riot, it's definitely Joe Biden. Nancy Pelosi. Does this look like Fox News to you? This is the Young Turks. Does this look like Fox News to you? No, that's CNN. Even on that, CNN, CNN, you got CNN here, you got CNN there. And even if I do play Fox shit, it normally has like some logo up here from where they screenshot shit from one of these fucking far left whack nut jobs. So I definitely don't have to go to, to Fox News to, to hear these lunatics. Pelosi's husband getting attacked, it's definitely Nancy Pelosi. These are the lunatics that are on right wing. It's interesting when we have these same people that were very upset that folks were trying to protest at Supreme Court Justice's house. They were sort of pearl clutching like, oh, how could they show up to these public figures homes? Same people are totally cool with people showing up to Nancy Pelosi's homes, yep. which just goes to demonstrate that they don't really speak from a place of their values because they don't have any. They speak from a place of whatever is politically or financially convenient for them. Well, if shit could have been in my favor of how I've planned and looked at things, that bitch would have been out of power years ago, and you wouldn't have had to worry about any of this shit. In fact, oh my God, I swear to God, man, fucking YouTube with these damn commercials. Talk about that Kavanaugh. Uh, there we go. Because I ain't trying to get no copyright fucking issues. Situation in a second. Guys, it, the important things that you need to know is this is not an isolated incident. Do you know that there are three people already in prison for threatening the murder of Nancy Pelosi? So there was Paul Hoffer, who was 60 years old. He's from Florida, doing 18 months in prison for threatening to behead Nancy Pelosi and AOC. Uh, then there's Steve Martis from Arizona, he's 77 years old, 21 months in prison, uh, threatening to kill Nancy Pelosi. Cleveland Meredith from North Carolina, 28 months in prison, threatening to shoot Nancy Pelosi on January 6th. He just got there late, but they caught him. He was planning to shoot and kill her, murder her. He's doing 28 months in prison. Yeah, we really know that he planned to do that because you said so. Yet the guy's most likely in jail because he was trespassing and shit like the other ones. Or like the person that shit on Nancy Pelosi's desk. A lot of, a lot of like, like, gotta blame Republicans for being terrorists, you know? Let's, let's just do that. Let's call them terrorists now. <clears throat> Maybe if she did a better job with her job, maybe she wouldn't have to worry about getting that type of shit. Okay, they see all of this and yet people still say super dangerous things online. So he, all of his beliefs were right wing, but unfortunately he also followed other folks. Now when you follow people online or you retweet their videos, etc. It doesn't mean that's it, that person is responsible. They were the only ones who did it. That guy has no agency, just blame the host, right? No, it doesn't mean that. But the fake left in this country is dry. They're, why I call them the fake left is because they're actually right wingers. They're not at all left, but they're pretending to be. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, did y'all just steal this from our shit? Because we. We used that same excuse on January 6th, where you all disguised yourselves as right-wingers 
to start tearing up shit. I love how they take our shit and just try to twist it around. Left wing, they have almost the same exact agenda as the right wing, but they throw in Medicare for all as if they care about that. Oh, now they even turned on Green New Deal, they've turned on the environment, they've turned on everything. Yeah, Antifa. Yeah, they're really just secret conservatives. <laughs> That's the stupidest shit I've seen, yo. That's the stupidest shit I've ever fucking heard. Man, the Young Turks have really come a long way since the coup in fucking Turkey, yo. <laughs> but they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're left wing. Okay, so uh, what did this guy believe? Here, let's take a look. Uh, so here's one of the uh, tweets that uh, Laura Rosen put out uh, that shows you who he had been following, etc. So here's uh, this one, suspect in attack on Paul Pelosi, seems to be a fan of a seemingly pro-Putin, pro-Assad YouTube conspiracy theorist named Jimmy Dore. And he's also anti-Semitic. One of his recent posts says the war in Ukraine will make it easier for the Jews to buy up the land. Understand, those are two separate issues. Jimmy's got a thousand problems and you're about to see some of them. I haven't seen the anti-Semitism. So he liked the Jimmy Dore videos and he was anti-Semitic. Those are not connected, okay? Uh, so now speaking of the anti-Semitism, look at this. This is the kind of vile trash that's out there. Uh, the next tweet from Laura Rosen Talk that shows trash. you uh, what he was going after. It is the anti-Semitic trope of the character uh, that you've seen unfortunately a lot online and it's growing and growing and growing, right? Uh, and this is about how they're gonna, the Jews are going to, uh, did the Ukraine war, it's actually Ukraine's fault. Poor Russia is being exploited by the Jews who are going to take over Ukraine. Virulent, out of control anti-Semitism. Kanye West is the tip of the iceberg. On the Young Turks, we- Wow, I've never even heard any of this shit. Talk about conspiracy theorists, right? Like the fuck, we have totally went off of topic. Oh, I'm warning fuck. you for two years straight. They, it, they, all of these radical right wingers at the end, they don't say Muslims, they don't say Latinos, they don't say blacks, they say the Jews, the Jews, the Jews. And here it is, now incredible attacks. Now the Pelosi's are not Jewish, but they are. No, the Democrats, the Democrats, the Democrats. <laughs> I mean, for fuck's sake, the Democrats basically started the Cl Klan, the Ku Klux Klan. Like, the fuck? The Republican Party was founded by black people. And you want to say that, oh, you're a fucking terrorist if you vote for the Republicans. You're a terrorist unless you support the left being cast as the global elites. And this guy uses global elites and anti-Semitic troops all the time. So they're linking those things together. One more uh, here, a uh, suspect on October 19th implored Trump to make Tulsi Gabbard uh, his VP nominee, okay? So he did this, he has several posts where he is a big fan of Tulsi Gabbard, okay. Now does that mean that Tulsi Gabbard and Jimmy Dore, for example, are anti-Semitic? No, those things again are disconnected. Does it mean that they're wholly responsible for what this guy did? Of okay, well, I'm gonna switch over to this other shit. I wanna try to stick as closely to the main story as I can. None of this shit adds up whatsoever that this left agenda is pushing. I wanna see cold hard facts. They can't show no cold hard facts. And it's some bullshit, you know, like. All the countless camera footage, shit like that they could show, they don't. And somehow the police was alerted before the Capitol Police seen the camera footage that they didn't notice anything was going on until they seen police cars flashing lights in the cameras. What kind of police is that then? Uh, and you would think that the person third in line to the president seat would have secret service protection like all the ex-presidents do. 
somebody that's supposed to be that important and doesn't have secret service protection maybe that's a sign that they do want something to accidentally happen <laughs> All right, so we're pushing 35 minutes. I will cut this on this video here so I don't make them so long. I will turn this into a part thing, and I will part it out. But I am going to video record all the parts tonight and push this out as soon as I can. I've been trying to allow all this stuff to come in and give it time for more evidence to come out but they're not just more theories more propaganda and more lies that's what's coming out so that's why this is like a true or false and like let's break this shit down together and go through it all like i said i have all the facts and information in one spot I still have another one two three four five five to go over so we've went over two so far and I will pick up here in part two so I hope to see you there and please be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already channel is slowly growing but growing nonetheless really like to see that pick up and you can find some other videos that have been taken down from youtube over on my rumble channel if you would like to go follow me over there as well i really appreciate it and hope to see you in the part two. Hope everybody has a good night. I'm your boy Fat Mike, signing out. Deuces.